You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rutrians for Black and White Sports 2. Well, we're going to talk about Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. That's right. Beetlejuice. Whether it's the Chicago Bears she's into it with or whether it's the nonstop repugnant violence in her city or in this case, potential ethics violations involving a campaign donation she received and the Chicago Fire. In case you're wondering, the Chicago Fire is the football club, a.k.a. the soccer club, the Major League Soccer Club in Chicago. This is involving some housing authority land. Oh, Lori Lightfoot, good God. And, you know, she's rerunning for mayor... And sadly, I'm not sure that a single one of the other 10 candidates is any better than her. I mean, that's how bad it is up there. They simply will not run a conservative at all in Chicago. It's insane. Keep in mind, basically when you get outside of the uh, Chicago area, the entire state turns into Trump country. Think about that. But Chicago is the place... Radical Socialist Chicago is the place that controls the entire state. It's that way in a lot of these Democratic states, by the way. Lightfoot hit with an ethics complaint after taking $25,000 in a donation from Chicago Fire's owner involved in a training facility land swap. Oh, here we go. Mayor Lori Lightfoot should be investigated for accepting a $25,000 contribution to her re-election campaign from Chicago Fire owner Joe Manasuto, according to a complaint filed Wednesday with the Chicago Board of Ethics and the Chicago Inspector General's office. That donation came 57 days after the Chicago City Council approved a proposal Lightfoot back to turn over some 26 acres of Chicago Housing Authority land to the Chicago Fire Football Club. Oh, Lord. The complaint was filed by Alderman Raymond Lopez of the 15th Ward, who is running for re-election to the City Council after dropping his bid to oust Lightfoot from the mayor's office. He has long been a thorn in Lightfoot's side. Quote, the appearance of impropriety is overwhelming, Lopez told WTTW News, adding that he sees it as a particularly egregious example of pay-to-play politics and the, quote, Chicago way that Lightfoot vowed to end. (laughs) Oh, Oh, man, if you believe that. The records filed by Lightfoot's campaign with the Illinois State Board of Elections show that Lightfoot for Chicago Campaign Committee received Manasuto's donation on November 17th and reported it on November 23rd. Manasuto, a billionaire, is one of Chicago's wealthiest business leaders and a frequent contributor to campaign funds to local elected officials. November 17th contribution marks the first time Manasuto has financially supported Lightfoot's campaign. In a statement released by his office, Manasuto, quote, is committed to making a significant investment on the historically underfunded West Side, I bet. Joe believes in investing in historically divested parts of Chicago, a vision he shares with Mayor Lightfoot, as a way to lift up the city as a whole, according to the statement. Lightfoot's campaign spokesperson, Christina Frungelick, told WTTW News that Lightfoot, who faces 10 opponents in the February 28th election, was proud to have the support of Manasuto, whom she called a socially responsible leader in Chicago's business community, and praised him for investing in our neighborhoods and supporting a range of philanthropic initiatives. In other words, he's woke and he'll fund out the money. 
Government decision-making is firewalled from political campaign activities, and our team executes a rigorous vetting process for every contribution to ensure we have complied with all campaign finance rules and laws, I'm sure. Companies and people doing business with the city are limited to contributing $1,500 to any candidate for elected office in Chicago per year. According to the city's governmental ethics ordinance, the Chicago Board of Ethics has determined those limits apply to, quote, any matter that was pending before city council or any city council committee in six months prior to or after the date of contribution if the matter involved zoning matters. The Chicago City Council voted 37 to 11 on September 21 to grant the soccer club the zoning change it needed to build the $80 million complex on now empty land that was part of a massive CHA complex known as Adams Brooks Loomis Abbott Homes near Roosevelt Road, Ashland Avenue, 14th Street, and Loomis Street. The controversial proposal would not have passed had Lightfoot not exercised the full power of her office after the City Council Zoning Committee initially rejected the proposal. At Lightfoot's demand, the committee reconvened less than 24 hours later to advance the proposal, setting up a vote by the full city council hours later. Imagine that. In elections, state laws limit individual donors to more than six, no more than $6,000 contribution to a single campaign in most races. Businesses can contribute no more than $12,000, and political action committees, a.k.a. PACs, are capped at 59900 However, candidates for, for mayor of Chicago can now raise nearly unlimited amounts of cash for their campaigns. Oh, businessman Willie Wilson contributed a total of $6 million to his campaign. State law lifts the caps for campaign contributions once a candidate contributes more than 100000 of their own money to their campaign. The law is designed to even the playing field between wealthy candidates and those who cannot self-fund their campaigns by allowing them to raise bigger amounts from contributors. However, limits on campaign contributions imposed by city laws remain in place despite Wilson's contributions. City ethics ordinance holds both the person or firm making the contribution as well as the elected official who accepted the contribution responsible for any infraction which triggers penalties of $20,000 per violation or three times the amount of the excessive contribution, whichever is greater. Listen to this. After thousands of families were forced out to move out of the ABLA Homes Public Housing Complex two decades ago, Chicago and federal leaders promised they would be able to come back to new housing and revitalized community on the city's near west side. New homes were to have been built on the land now slated for the training facility, you guessed it, going to the Chicago fire. Holy crap. Lightfoot and the Chicago Housing Authority officials defended the deal with the Chicago fire because it would provide funding to up to fix up aging ABLA properties and recreational facilities offering job opportunities to residents. Yeah, but that's not what was supposed to happen here. It was supposed to come back and provide new housing. That's what it said. And now it looks like, look, we got a little I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine going on here, possibly between the Chicago Fire owner and Lori Lightfoot and her re-election for Chicago mayor. None of this surprises me in the least. Little, what do they call it? Quick pro quo, quid pro quo, whatever in the hell Hannibal Lecter calls it. Um, we know what that means. I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. And uh, I'll hook you up with the land. You hook me up with a little campaign fundage. And we'll see where this all goes. Lightfoot's going to get reelected in Chicago. People are going to vote her back in, which is just unbelievable because you residents up there 
are essentially fish in a barrel when it comes to crime and you're all just getting shot up and you seem to be okay with it. Keep electing these radical socialist Democrats in the office and this is what happens. And you got this shady bullshit like this going on behind the scenes. Absolutely. You, you want to talk about egregious? This kind of crap and reelecting her is egregious. She could care less about that city. She's worried about dancing, singing, her TikTok, doing karaoke, dancing at the queer festivals. You name it. That's what she's concerned with. Getting up on stage saying F Clarence Thomas. She could care less about the laundry list of violence we cover over on Black and White Network weekly about her. Here we are. My God. Tell me what you think, black and white sports two fans. Lori Lightfoot, the gift that keeps on giving. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Black and White Network supporters, make sure you go over and check out the Black and White Network merchandise store. 25% off USA First. 25% off USA First. Go now. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.